Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guests here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. We have Amanda Wilson on the podcast. She's a nationally qualified MPC competitor. She's coming to us all the way from Ohio, a very, very popular hotspot for a lot of our guests. And But most importantly, she's our current guest. Amanda, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, it's cool to be here. Absolutely. So why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on what really inspired you to make that change and adapt that really healthy and fit lifestyle? What was your inspiration? Um, Quite a few things. So when I was growing up, my dad was bodybuilding, powerlifting, all that cool stuff, nothing competitively, but just in it, you know, and so I was one of those little girls in and out of the daycare every day, you know, going in and seeing all these fit people and fit women. And and I remember something specifically from when I was young, I'm saying like five or six, maybe. And you know how they have pictures at the gym and I, I never really connected it until now when I started bodybuilding, but I was always so intrigued by seeing a strong muscular woman and no, nothing too big, nothing too crazy, but just like, that's what I grew up kind of seeing, you know? And then I uh, went to high school and I was involved in all sports all throughout school, soccer, softball, basketball. And then I started to dance, uh, getting close to when I was um, going to graduate. And so that was a lot of fun. I was really active in that. And then from dance, I went into an ROTC class. And so that actually started some real, like, hey, I should be running. Yeah. Hey, I should be kind of strong, you know, to do push-ups and sit-ups mm-hmm. and things like that. So it just kind of started it. And then me throughout the military, just doing it and living it. And uh, I remember my husband and I, after we got married, it, we were on like six months, we were just eating, you know, pizza, ice cream, everything bad for you, you know, gaining that, that couple's weight, yep. they call it. And then we, we looked at each other one day and we were like, I don't want to live like this anymore. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to feel like this. Yep. I'm like coming home from work and sleeping yep. at 19 years old. Yep. And it's just like, it didn't make sense. And so we kind of started this bodybuilding thing together and I wasn't, competitively wanting to do it at all. I was just kind of doing it, but then my body started changing and I was like, wow, this is really freaking cool. These are like the pictures, you know, I would see on the walls growing up. And then we met some people who were in it and were competing. And then I just, you know, stars in my eyes since then. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, that's one thing that we get all the time from a lot of stories of the people that we have on is that you know, as soon as you start to realize those changes and see those changes, it's really, really right. addictive. Which is just a huge thing because a lot of people, especially in our generation, I mean, they want the results now and they and they want it yesterday. Basically, they're not willing to wait. You know that they're not willing to wait those couple of months that it takes to see results. Because I always like to make the comparison. I mean, between someone who's maybe trying to lose weight and someone that's an alcoholic. If you're an alcoholic, if you don't drink for one day, you're doing an amazing amount of progress. If you're, if you just work out for one day, you're not going to see really any change. So it's just really hard to just keep getting up day after day. But once you see it, I mean, it's addicting and it's, and it's, I mean, like I said, it's one of those healthy addictions. Like my dad always yeah. says, it's probably that one of the healthiest addictions you can have. So yeah, it's great. 100, 100%. And how did that military training you think sort of give you a background when it came to finally then going to the gym and really starting the bodybuilding? Because like you said, in the military, I mean, you're doing a lot of push ups, you're doing a lot of other types of, you know, body weight exercises. Do you really think that that really gave you a good foundation that really helped you build once you really started to take it, the bodybuilding part seriously? Yeah, for sure. Because with any branch, you know, we have a certain standard. Mm -hmm. If you fail it, you could get kicked out and, you know, you, you kind of get that reputation of, okay, you're in the military, but you know, you're not fit. Mm -hmm. You can't pass a simple PT test, things like that. So there was a standard, mainly it was running. In the beginning, it was running for me. You know, I was doing all those funny side jump stuff on the treadmill at the gym, um, didn't start bodybuilding right away, but was just shedding down the fat and things like that. So basically having that standard, right? And then me, I'm, ve- I'm very competitive by nature and I think I get it from my dad. So me, you know, being able to barely, you know, just making it to where, you know, I, I pass it. But then me, I'm like, I want to do better. I want to do better. I want to do better. And so I kind of started bench pressing, which I always thought was like a guy's move, you know, a guy's <laughs> weightlifting thing. I never wanted to touch it. Then I started bench pressing and my pushups just like, I max out every time now. Same with like ab workouts and stuff like that. And so really just seeing how weights kind of, because I, I have a standard for myself as well. You know, there's a standard in the military, but for myself, like I can never let myself get past a certain point. You know, of course, if I'm injured or something, that would change it. But 
I hold myself to a standard and me, I just want to get better and better and better. And so that's kind of, yeah, yeah and how it comes together. 100%. I mean, I always say, you know, that sort of brings us into one of my favorite stereotypes to bust because you were mentioning how you thought that, you know, bench pressing was a guy thing, but it's gotten so much better the last five years with Instagram, but there are still so many women that just believe if they touch one weight, they're just going to hulk out, you know, put on 50 pounds of muscle. And like I was saying before, you know, if, if someone figures that out, you know, I'm giving them my entire salary just because they have found the one true secret that I'll be like, okay, so I'll only have to go to the gym and, you know, lift one weight and then I'll be fine. So I mean, that would be the, that'd be the greatest. Th- I know everyone would do that. would be like the greatest deal ever. But did you ever have that fear when you were getting started? And even if you didn't, I mean, I bet you hear that all the time. What is your response to that? Um, I kind of did, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, watching my dad do it, I know it takes years. It takes years. And so just watching him progress as he did. And now he's in his fifties, he's getting there. He's right around that range. And he's just now he's a, an agent now. So he, he's just about to compete for real after, you know, 20 something years, which I think is awesome. So I know it takes a long time throughout, but it's different seeing somebody and being like, wow, I want to look like that. But then actually having your body start to look like that. It's scary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In the beginning, it's really, you're you're kind of like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. But that happens over a long period of time. It's Mm -hmm. not just blink. And then all of a sudden I have muscles. It's I lost the weight and I was like, oh my gosh, like I actually have muscle. This is kind of scary, but kind of very intriguing, you yeah. know? And then there was somebody we used to work with and, and she's beautiful to this day. She's beautiful. You know, she's blonde, mm-hmm. short, bob cut, and real muscular, real big. And she walks around, you know, I just thought it was so cool. And to see my body now, I'm about three years working on it and it's kind of sort of getting to where she is. And I'm just like, <laughs> I know it takes time, but like, I love it. You know, mm-hmm. just, you can always cut back, you know, let's say if you do get to a standard where you're like, Oh, you know, I don't really like how I look chill out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but it doesn't happen right away. So it's something that gradually happens. I always say, you know, my favorite story about that is, you know, I had a really good friend in college and she would always say, you know, like Ryan, cause that's when I really started, you know, work out and take things serious. She goes, Ryan, you're getting bigger and stronger. I've always wanted to go to the gym with you, but I'm just afraid that I'm going to get super, super bulky. I don't want to be like that. So then finally one night I just sort of snapped and I said, look, the amount of weight that you carry in your purse when we go out to clubs or when we go out to get something to eat weighs more than 90% of the dumbbells in that gym. And you are not right. gaining any <laughs> amount of muscle from lugging that thing around 24 seven. And that sort of kind of convinced her. And it, yeah, it's one of those things too, where it's like, just start it what's the worst thing that's going to happen you're going to get healthier and it's i mean it's one of those things where i just tell them i was like just go in there and try it the worst thing that you can do is not try it then because it's i mean it's like there's unless you get injured there's nothing really bad that's really going to happen to you about it so that's i mean that's one thing that i always love to bust on this show and i mean i know what i know exactly what we're saying when you're like when you even i mean even me being a guy when i got bigger i was like oh this is kind of weird but you can't really see it now because i have my 15 pounds of fat that i put on every winter just because being up in minnesota when it's like negative 10 degrees you don't want to you don't want to be that lean because then you get way too cold way too quick and then you're just yeah that's that's a bad that's a bad feeling but yeah I remember even too just like looking in the mirror and I was like okay this feels kind of weird like I'm not used to seeing my body like this but was that ever a hard adjust, a weird adjustment for you though too because I know I mean I'm 6'3 so I was used to being like a skinny twig almost my entire life so then finally seeing that I was just like oh that's that's interesting was that sort of a weird mental adjustment for you just knowing that your body used to look a certain way for the majority of your life but now it looks completely different Yeah, it's a completely different physique. And my sister, she is actually built like me. Mm -hmm. We put, we were born very wide shoulder, just Mm -hmm. our bone structure, period. Wide shoulder, smaller waist, so then our hips kind of go out a little bit, which is great for the division Mm -hmm. that I compete in. And she's kind of, and we've talked about this, I'm not throwing her Mm -hmm. under the bus or anything, but she's where I started, Mm -hmm. you know, holding that weight that your body has just kind of always held in those particular spots. Mm -hmm. Even when I do put on weight, it looks completely different. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell her and I stress and I stress, I'm like, you know, you could be where I'm at, but it, you know, it takes the building of the muscle and the the loss of the body fat, because when you do put it on, it gets put on, in my opinion, a little bit more health, healthy looking, Mm -hmm. you know, and in the right places where you want it to be. And everybody's different, of course, but seeing where I've been and where I started, it's like, it's such a beautiful, crazy thing, Mm -hmm. you know, to just, and it's, like I said, it's slow, it's over Mm -hmm. time. So it's nothing drastic, but then, you know, I kind of look back and I look at my sister. I'm like, I used to look like that. (laughs) 
and it, it's just, it's really cool, you know, because then I'm, I'm more motivated mm-hmm. as time goes on. So 100%. I always love to also yeah. make the statement that if you were to walk into a gym, kind of like what you were talking about, if you were to walk into a gym with a hundred people, there are a hundred different ways as to how that individual person got into shape. I mean, whether it comes down to their diet, their nutrition, how many reps they do, what exercise they do. There are so many little things that then ends up, adds up to what you end up seeing. And I always say, you know, like if you were to go up to someone and say like, Hey, that body part, what do you train for that? Cause that just looks really, really amazing. What do you do for that? What they do 99% of the time is not going to be as effective for you. Was that a struggle for you at all? Sort of finding out what worked best for you specifically? Um, kind of. So, because I did used to dance, mm-hmm. my knees aren't the best. Mm-hmm. My hips aren't the best. You know, I've worn down a lot of my body parts due to dancing. Mm-hmm. And so in a way, some things work, but in the beginning, getting that mind to muscle connection, sometimes you don't even have it. You don't even know what that means. You don't even, so my lats, it was the hardest thing. And my husband, he laughs at me still Mm -hmm. just getting to feel those until you've actually built some muscle. Mm -hmm. It's like, sometimes it feels impossible, but you know, you just have to keep working at it, keep working at it. And then someone may pull their arms down this way and it feels good for them. But let's say it hurts my shoulders, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone's body structure is different. So just slight, the same movement, the same exercise, but just maybe moving a different way. And then once I started learning that and learning what feels good and what doesn't feel good, so you want to avoid what doesn't feel Mm -hmm. good. It's just, it's been like uphill from there. Yeah, I got to say, I struggled with that because I was on the football team, you know, in high school. And we just basically, we just did, you know, everyone does the same lifts. You do it the same form. You do the same everything. So then when I, once I got to college, I mean, yeah, that was a that was a learning curve for me. But yeah, like I'm, I'm just lucky because my back is the one thing that I could, I could train that like once every six months and it would still look. That's the only thing that like if I, that would, people would notice and they'd be lucky. like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, they'd be like, that's the only thing that they'd look back and they'd be like, oh, do you compete? Everything else in my body does not look anything like a competitor, but my back is just yeah. freaky like that. But on the on the negative side though my legs i just yeah being that tall i have to put them into overdrive and still it looks like i mean we've had people on here that have calves that are just as big as my thighs and i'm like okay this is bs yeah <laughs> yep that's my number some? that is my number one pet peeve too like i always <laughs> ask what is one body part that really really comes along easy for you that you don't need to train as much and then what is one that you really struggle with and one lady then just put her calves up on the table and i was like okay this is bs your calves are like as big as my thighs this is like we're i was gonna be like yeah we're done here this is this is bs but yeah, yeah. I all, the, yeah, those naturally <laughs> genetically blessed people with those calves. Yeah, it's because I could do like a 10,000 calf raises a day, every single workout. Oh I mean, they wouldn't get I could literally inject muscle straight into the in, into my calves and nothing would happen. It's just it's, it's you yep. and me both. Yep. It's ridiculous. Yep. I don't, yep. We get we get the struggle 100, 100 percent. But when you decide to do bodybuilding, first of all, what was your diet like before that when you were just getting into shape? Because a lot of people don't realize that the bodybuilding diet, as opposed to someone who's just trying to get in shape, you know, lose some pounds and look like they maybe could compete. But that diet is completely different. How did that change? So me growing up, I knew next to nothing about nutrition. One thing being protein, carbs, and fats, right? Then another thing being actual nutrients, minerals things that you need. So I used to think that carb or protein made you fat, right? Because in the gym, you see a bunch of guys, they're pounding protein, pounding Mm -hmm. protein. And you know, it's the ones that didn't really diet Mm -hmm. to be shredded. And so I thought in my head, I thought protein made you fat and carbs didn't. So I had a, a mild addiction to pasta. And that was something that I could not give up to save my life. And even to this day now, it's crazy. I don't even really like it. I Mm -hmm. prefer not to eat it. So when I started muscular, you know, development changed, Mm -hmm. right. But body fat did not And I was like, what am I not doing wrong? And I would talk to my husband, I'm getting all upset and stuff. And so I actually went on an isogenic with my best friend. We went on an isogenics 30 day program. And then that kind of changed a lot of it. That's where I started to learn about protein, fats, and how many calories you should be eating, how often you should be eating, and all those things. And I still use isogenics today, just in a bodybuilder way. And so I did that, lost some body fat, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. So then I started to dive into what does it take to to have a meal plan for a bodybuilder? And so I kind of shifted the 30-day plan to weight loss to more towards like muscle growth. Mm -hmm. And so 
kind of more of like an athletic type of thing. And then, you know, I, I went on this, uh, I did it by myself. It was a, a, it was just a challenge, 30 day dairy free challenge. And from there I learned I can cut cheese out. <laughs> right. And so I used that power and that determination. And then I cut, I cut pasta out. Mm -hmm. And then that's when everything was like, shoop, mm -hmm. everything started changing. It was like a game changer. So it, for every person, it's different, right? Because you have different addictions. You mm -hmm. have different favorite foods. Some people don't even like carbs. And I'm like, good for you, but probably mm -hmm. stronger than you because of that. You know, yeah. like carbs, it all it goes into different ways. And so slowly learning, it's just, it's over time. Everything is over time. Everything I've learned, and I'm going to keep learning. I don't know everything. I would never say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I probably couldn't do that 30 day challenge. I'm too much of a chocolate milk fan. That would just be that. Oh, would, that, that I'd be going through withdrawals for that. But yeah, that's that's <laughs> definitely that's definitely you know that's great that because I like I know like you said pasta and you said that you're in the military. So I automatically thought of that band of brothers scene where they made him eat pasta and then they immediately made him go do that that big hike afterwards and everyone's like throwing up because they are they're all full on that. But right. yeah, yeah, pasta. I, I mean, pasta is great. I mean, I have a little tiny bit of Italian in me that in that side of the family, you know, they always got to make that stuff. So yeah, I grew up on a lot of pasta. So yeah, it's that's definitely one of my favorites too. But now, if you were to poll a lot of the general public, I always like to say you're going to get a small singular percentage of people that are basically have the courage to go up basically on stage and pose in a bikini in front of people. Not that many people have the courage to do it. It's something that takes, you know, like I said, a lot of courage, a lot of determination and drive. Was that ever a struggle for you sort of getting the willpower to basically like go up on stage and be in front of all this people? Or is it like a lot of the guests that we've had on tour, they just say, you're like, you know what? It got to a point where I was just training my butt off and I just wanted to go and show it off. Yeah. I've gone through, like back and forth with this a little bit. Cause you know, there were like my single days didn't really care. You know what I mean? I would wear like the crop tops mm -hmm. and the, the high waist stuff. And then I got married and then it, you know, my style changed a little bit. I wanted to be a little more conservative. And then over time, just the transition of being higher body fat, a lot of women have that insecurity. Now <laughs> let's say you take any woman and let's say, let's get you down to like 13 to 15% body fat most women are going to be like, where's my bikini at? Yep. You know, like take me to the beach. I want to show mm. this off. And so I'm kind of like that, but it's not necessarily like show it off for my hard work, yeah. but I'm just so much more confident. Mm -hmm. And then I'm getting to a point now in my off season where I'm kind of, like I said, I hold a standard. I'm kind of getting a little past that standard. And I'm, so I'm dialing it back for the Arnold. I'm going to go to the Arnold just to watch. And so it, it's kind of just really how you feel about yourself. And I, I've been on this self-love journey for the last six years mm -hmm. and that changed everything as well. So it, it's really just different, but I mean, I try to be conservative. There's a position and I watched a couple of your podcasts. So I kind of wanted to touch on something. It's, it's kind of like when you look like an athlete and I'm not downing anybody, but you know, there's like an athletic way of showing your mm -hmm. skin. Right. And then there's more of a, I'll just say non-athletic. I, I know exactly skin. what you're talking about. Right. Yep. And I, I don't want to offend anybody, mm -hmm. but I'm more, when I look at my figure and wearing a bikini and things like that, and, and it's more respective in the athletic, I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm about it. I'm for it. Yeah, ex but. especially for some of those bikini girls that we have on and some of those poses that they do. I was like, is that really the most athletic thing that you can really you can really do? Is it more sort of like a beauty contest than for some of them? So, yeah, I definitely I definitely yeah. have those. But yeah, kind of both. That's, oh, that's oh, yeah, kind yeah. Of the fun of it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Because I was going to say, yeah, that's I mean, it's like, yeah, would you really want to have bodybuilders without makeup on and without any tan on? Just come on. That would be <laughs> that'd be kind of a little drab where you just be like, oh, OK, that's, you know, I but, look like a sheet of paper. Yeah. Stage. Well, yeah. Well, and plus me, too, where I'm just uh, where I'm just I'm so white that the sun reflects off me, basically. Right. You just see, so it's like, yeah, no one wants to see that. But that also brings me up into one of my favorite questions. I mean, like you see, you know, I'm from the upper Midwest where, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to, yep. Well, that too. Yeah, I'm she's so from, white. She's from Ohio. So I know, but we got the, we got the very, very white gene. But what is that feeling like for you when you get that tan? Because as someone that has never had a tan other than a farmer's tan, which I mean, that's not a real tan, let's face it. But as, as someone who's never really like been properly tan, what is that feeling like for you when you get to put that tan on? And like everyone always talks about, you see muscles that you never even knew that you ever had. Everything really seems to pop out what is that feeling like for you oh my gosh so first of all let's back up and talk about the tanning process yes, yes. i was frozen mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what to expect but you are literally crazy because there's fans mm -hmm. they want your they want your tan to dry so i i just remember the, the thing i hate the most i like the tan mm -hmm. i'm really dark but you have to understand it's kind of like when you go to a broadway show 
right? They have to have that really dramatic makeup. They have almost like brown, gray, black in their features because the lights are so bright. So that's why I always get that question. Oh, so you got to wear the tan? It's like, duh, you know, you're <laughs> on a stage. You, I, you have to be able to see it. But I just remember freezing in a tent. <laughs> Sometimes not even a tent because I've done two shows and you're just out in the open, you know, butt naked in front of a bunch of other chicks freezing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. I like it. It's that- cool. You get, you get to see stuff. Oh, absolutely. And that was one thing that I didn't even know about, you know, that they have to be like completely naked. That's one thing that I never even knew until yeah. I did my first podcast. I was like, oh, wow, that's definitely yeah. interesting. But then a lot of people, because a lot of people just see that look and they don't realize what goes into that. And the fact that, like, I always like to say, you have to basically be a statue when you have that right. stuff on. You can't, like you can't touch anything. You can't, you know, sit down. You, some people bring their own bed sheets because when they go to sleep, you know, it's going to yeah. rub off on everything. So, yeah, it's just... Yeah. You know, what they have to do, what you guys, you know, have to do with it is just absolutely incredible. But I mean, probably my favorite question to ask, and this is a question that I ask, you know, all of my guests, whether they, you know, be health and fitness or be up and coming bands. For my bands, I always ask, you know, what is that feeling like performing live and getting up on stage? But that also applies to the bodybuilders that we have on the show. What is that feeling like for you when you get to step on stage, you know, like I said, show off all that hard work, you know, those months upon months of dedication that you've devoted to in your prep. What is that feeling like for you? Personally? I love it. Mm -hmm. I've always, like I said, I used to dance. So I've I've loved the whole performance aspect. And I think that's why I'm really good with my stage presence Mm -hmm. and posing is because I have kind of that dancer in me, that performer. Mm -hmm. Right. But then there's another part of me where I'm like, I get annoyed if people even look at me, you Mm -hmm. know, I'm not that look at me girl. I'm not that when I go into the gym, I don't want to be stared at. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of pop off a little bit on some, sometimes on people, but when you get on stage, it's like, I don't, it's something with the lights and the warmth of the lights and you have, right. You've been dieting really hard. You, this is your end goal. You know, it's like, why, why go all the way competing for five years at whatever your sport is? And then you get to, let's say football, you get to the Super Bowl, then, eh, you know what I mean? It <laughs> is like that. It's like, you, you're just, you're here, you're living, you're now. And then when you walk up those stairs, it's almost like, game on and mm-hmm. I love it I love yeah. it and that's why I, I like can't stay away from the stage but I need to because I need to improve no, you know? well, yeah I mean because yeah <laughs> that, I mean like I always say I got that high you know when I was playing baseball as a pitcher so like I yeah. always say that, that that's just a feeling that you just feel so alive and I always tell everyone that comes on and you know everyone listening just find that one thing in your life that makes you feel like that and you'll and everything right. else will be fine you just got it's all about just finding that that moment and just living in that moment 100% but now right. we come to one of my one of the fun questions now. So, what is your go to post show meal? Oh gosh, um, my first show. So, two of my favorite foods are like burgers and pizza. Yes, and ice cream. Okay. Um, so, my after my first show, I had a burger and it was glorious. Mm-hmm. It was perfect and juicy. But I ha- had it for like five hours because mm-hmm. I live close and everything would be closed by the time my show was done in my portion. So we picked it up and then I recooked it in the oven and it was like, it was just fresh. Like mm-hmm. I toasted the bread. Yeah. I went in, I mm-hmm. like sauteed the fries on the skillet. Like, you know, I went mm-hmm. all for it and it, that was amazing. And then after my second show at nationals in Chicago, I had pizza mm-hmm. and I was like deep dish. It was, uh, yes, yeah. it was deep. It was like how they, they flip it upside down mm-hmm. or they do something weird. Oh, pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't really a fan, uh, but I think like, I think burger because it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you get the burger and the fries, you get the cheese, you get the onion, the flavors and all that. And then pizza is just kind of bland to me. So I would say burger. Yeah. Sweet potato fries, 100%. And ice cream. I was going to say, if I ever competed, yeah, five guys, I would just go there and I would just get oh, two, of yeah. the, two of the biggest double hamburgers that they had and then just, yeah, load up on that. <laughs> But I, I hate asking that question because now my mouth's even getting watery right now. I know, even thinking I'm about hungry. five guys. So I, yeah. So from now on, I mean, this is gonna be you're gonna be like a hundredth health and fitness guest. But now I gotta start remembering to ask that as like my final question then, so that I can just end it and then get something to eat. But now, yeah, absolutely. But now I always love to bring this up. It's one of the, probably the most important thing that I'll talk about is because not that many people bring about talk about it on Instagram. It's not really brought up. It's kind of like an unknown secret that not too many talk people talk about. But when it comes to these shows, a lot of people don't realize because i've had guests come up to me or uh, friends come up to me i should say like i'll give an example so like at new year's eve i had a friend come up to me and say yeah i watch your podcast i love them but i was really surprised that these bodybuilders aren't 
they don't maintain that look 365 days out of the year. A lot of people, they only see the photos of you when you're in your competition or when you're in your mm-hmm. contest prep. They don't understand that 99% of the people there, I mean, there's some just freakishly people that can maintain that physique doing whatever they do. But for the vast, vast, vast majority of people, you will not be able to maintain that look from your dieted down and just your all that working out has caused you to look. So a lot of people get very anxious or they get depressed knowing that they do have to put on weight. How has that experience been like for you knowing that, you know, after all this hard work, I, I will eventually though have to gain weight because you do need to gain weight if you are, like you said, if you do want to get better and put on more muscle, has that been a struggle for you at all? Um, me going into this, I had a few people that had competed before. So I kind of, knew what to expect. I was getting a lot of advice. I was getting a lot of ways to balance how I felt about myself as opposed to letting your body recover and get healthy again. Because being that low body fat as a woman or even as a guy, as low as they get, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy. Your organs kind of hate you. You know, they're, they're thirsty, they're Mm -hmm. hungry. So me, I, I knew what to expect. And, and I'm blessed with a lot of people around me that love me. You know, and that don't, don't say, oh, you know, pinch your, your stomach and say, oh, you know, you're getting all that back again. (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm blessed with a lot of people around me that love me. Mm -hmm. And so I want to improve, Mm -hmm. you know, but I think the self love, it's, it's like a superpower. I read that one time. Mm Self-love is a superpower. So if you're going to compete, because I know after some women compete, they unfortunately end up with body, Mm -hmm. you know, dysmorphia and, and real, uh, diseases and anorexia, bulimia and things like that. But I've been blessed to not fall into that, but I know it happens. So I kind of was going to expect it, um, not expect it for myself, but it was a possibility. Mm -hmm. So me, I just, I kind of went into my show and into my prep, you know, because you get a lot of followers, Mm -hmm. you gain a lot, you get a lot of people, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of engagement. And I went into my shows saying like, I can't wait to not have a six pack again because you're exhausted. You know, it takes a lot. It's Mm -hmm. it's not like, I don't want a six pack all year round. That's just me personally. I don't want to look like I do on stage all year round. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that attractive. You know, my face, like I'm, I'm naturally, Mm -hmm. I I hold some fat in my face. When you go to a show, like you, you fold and like, you know what I mean? You Mm -hmm. lose all. You lose a lot of it. And so personally, I don't like to look like that. And so I think that's what helps me. And also who you surround yourself with changes it completely. Yeah. So. I completely understand the holding fat in the face thing too. I mean, I only weigh 200 pounds and I'm 6'3 and I look like I weigh about like 280 with these cheeks here. No. So it's one, of, it's one of those things too, where sometimes, yeah, I completely get that where I just look at myself for pictures with friends and I was like, God, I look like I'm obese in that just, just cause of my face alone. So yeah. But yeah, like I, like we, I say too all the time, I compare, you know, bodybuilding, you know, sort of starting a business, you're going to have to spend money to make money. So you're going right. to have to gain weight in order to gain muscle. So it's just, that's just something that you really have to do with, like you said too, a lot of people struggle with that. So that's why I love to bring that up and just make sure that people realize it's like even people that maybe watch us that are thinking about competing. It's like, just know yeah. that you will have to put on weight, but it will. I mean, if you follow it right, I mean, it's the best thing that you can do, obviously, because let's yeah. face it. I mean, if, if you like if you get like six plays or something in a show, you're not going to want to look the same way going into the next one and just say. So, I mean, yeah, it's always a never ending improvement. One hundred percent. But now I love to ask these next two questions. They're, they're two of my favorite ones. But when I started to go to the gym a lot and I started to work out a lot in college, the one negative thing that I found out is that you're going to get asked to move a lot of people's furniture. You're going to get asked to open a lot of pickle jars. I mean, I'm still at home with my parents for the next couple of months. And every time they come home with food, like they did this morning, I basically have to go in and lift the car into the driveway. Basically. Have you found that just because of the way that you look, I mean, especially when you're on prep, but even now just the way that you look, especially being around family or just being around friends that, that they expect you to do favors like that for them, just based on the way that you look. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily an expectation mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm one of the, I'm a yes man. Mm-hmm. I hate, I hate to say that, but I'm getting better at saying no, mm-hmm. you know? And so when something's asked of me, I'll do it, whether I nearly hurt myself doing it. Mm-hmm. And it really just depends. Like just last week, I moved three huge truckloads of homes. So we moved my grandpa mm-hmm. to one place and then my mom my mom's house took two whole truckloads wow. to another place. Um, should I have done that? 
not necessarily. I started dieting, so I was kind of grouchy about it, <laughs> but I still did it. I wouldn't say it's an expectation, but me knowing I'm able and capable, like I try, I try to help. But then that's at home. That's with my family. That's people that I love. Let's say in a work setting, yep. people do. Mm-hmm. They expect you to do this and do that. And, you know, and, oh, look, put the guys away. Let's have Airman Wilson, you know, go yeah. and do this. And I'm just like, really? Like I'm dieting. Y'all yeah. are eating everything you can. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Yeah, I learned that the hard way. I'm at UPS now as a as a manager, but I used to be when I was about, you know, 20, I was at Amazon just as a regular normal person when I was going to college. And that's when I was, you know, bigger than I than I am now. And that was, you know, they nicknamed me muscles. And every time there's a package over 70 pounds, they say get muscles on it. So in between yeah. every shift, I mean, I had yeah. probably like 40 or 50, 70 pound packages. And it got to a point where I was like, God, I wish that I could just like wear. Sl-. I mean, if the, if the environment wasn't so hot in there, I would have worn, you know, a sweater every single day just because it's like, but also being six foot three people look at that and they're like oh he could do that anyway so it's it's a double-edged sword but it got to a point where like last summer every other weekend friends hey ryan you want to come and help me move i'm moving on my parents house it got to a point where i did realize you know that they recognized the hard work but i did tell them i was like hey so here's what's going to happen you're going to let me work out before because i'm not going to get tired and not want to work out after i lift your stuff for you right. but we sort of worked right. out a deal but yeah it's it's one of those things that you do have to deal with but now probably i mean my audience favorite question by far is when it comes to, and again, this is a multi-million dollar idea for anyone out there, but when it comes to clothes, especially for fit women, but for fit guys as well, your clothing options can be limited. I always like to say for girls, especially like if you have really big shoulders, dresses can somewhat be out of the picture. Jeans are another thing that we hear of because you know, you have a big lower (laughs) body and then you're supposed to have a small waist that are kind of impossible. What are some ways that you sort of compensate for the fact that your clothing options can be limited? Um, so I'm just now, I figured it out before, but now I'm in my first off season post show, mm-hmm. right? Because it's different when you have an off season, you don't really know what's under everything. And then you prep down for a show and then your next off season is like dope, mm-hmm. right? You're making gains left and right. You're like, I know areas I need to improve. I know this, I know that. So something that needs to grow, believe it or not, are my shoulders. Mm-hmm. I'm built very wide. And so I kind of compensate, like, I kind of think, okay, I'm wide. So my shoulders don't need to get that big. Yes, they do. (laughs) They need to grow. And so now I'm growing out of my shirts. I'm growing out of my dresses. My grandma, my late grandma, I just got a lot of her clothes and I fit it just about, you know, a little bit ago. And now I'm starting not to, but then I also keep in mind when I lose, like, you don't want to go throw away your whole wardrobe Mm -hmm. because when you get into prep, nothing will fit you also, because there were clothes I had almost my whole life and I do a show and they don't fit me, Mm -hmm. but I will say fashion Nova (laughs) is the savior of the day for jeans and for a lot of clothes, honestly, um, because it's very stretchy. So if there's any girls watching this fashion Nova, I know there's like a stigma with it, but it's really great and it works. And that that's what works for me. Those are the only jeans I can wear. Oh yeah. I've had two fashion people on, both of them, I said, you know, like, hey, I have a multi-million dollar idea for you guys. They haven't gotten back to me. But, you know, again, if anyone out there, if you're a fashion designer or if anything, if you design something like that, that is, a that is again, you're going to make a lot of money. Oh, yeah. So I highly we recommend need it. Oh, 100%. And I, like I say, I've, I've said I have like 100 guests on here that would be willing to pay you for it, too, already. So those customers, yeah. that's customers right alone. But now, I mean, now that I like to ask all of my guests that are married or in relationships or engaged, I always like to ask these three questions. So how did you and your husband meet? We, we met on Instagram, believe it or not. This it is it the, works the every once in a while, world. people. Yep, yep. <laughs> so I will fully admit, because I love him, he's great, and he's been great. Um, of course, some direction by God of, you know, mm-hmm. pushing me to go and do one thing. So I was the creep. <laughs> <laughs> he had like his, his fitness Instagram, you know, then personal Instagram, and And to this day, I can still see the picture and I don't want to get emotional, but I saw one picture of him and I just, there's some, there was something about him. I knew there was so much more than just the muscles and the face and the sexiness. Cause he's, he's hot. My husband's a hottie. So I saw a picture of him and I was like, oh my gosh. And so I I like started following him and then I went and I was creeping on his fitness page and then I found a link to his personal page. And so I went to his personal page and, you know, I did the thing and, and then, um, he, he kind of was like very standoffish with me for days. Um, but I I was very persistent, you know, that turned into like 
Snapchat, and then I kept flashing my face out so we couldn't see. He he would just see like my green eyes. It's, just, it's funny because we've told this story like <laughs> a few times now. And so he was like, "Who is this girl? Like, what the heck? Like, who are you?" And from there, you know, it went to like this different texting app because he didn't want to give me his number, mm-hmm. which is understandable because yep. he gets a lot of people talking to him all the mm-hmm. time. And so it went from there. And then we just decided to Skype one day. And then I was in. Uh, tech school, military training. I was learning my job. So I had already traveled state to state a few times because I was air crew. So Mm -hmm. we have multiple different installations where we go Mm -hmm. for that. And so I was like, meh, I've already been to a few states. Why not just fly to California on a limb? (laughs) I didn't tell my family. I didn't tell anybody because I knew they wouldn't approve. Mm -hmm. But it was like one of those things. God was like, go, Mm -hmm. go. Like there was nothing scary about it. And I met all of his family on Skype and, you know, a couple months later after we started talking, I just went to California and the rest is history. That's awesome. So again, you guys follow your crush on Instagram, send him a message. You never know. No, I'm no, I'm no, I would say be careful about that. But yeah, we have stories. We have stories. Yeah. Yeah. That it does, that it does work out. I mean, you're not our first, you're actually, I think our third guest that that's actually happened to. You're the first person that actually did that. No, no, the other two guests we had was like, Oh yeah, this guy just started messaging me and I thought he was cute. So, but yeah, we have one finally. So we have it both ways now where someone actually messaged them and, and it worked out. So yeah, like I said, I do, I do have one of my friends, Savannah, she's into fitness too. You should, and, I don't know if you want to put this in the podcast, but her her um, name is Weights and Freedom. Yeah. And I think she would love to do this as well because oh, she yeah. actually has an injury. So she's working around an injury. Yeah. But her and her husband met the same way. And I think theirs was Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> and she messaged him. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> she's yeah. like, message your crush. Do it. Do it. Go for it. Yeah, that's definitely staying in, and I'll I'll send her a message right as soon as I'm done recording yeah. with you. Yeah, I mean, She's I'd love great. I'd, I'd love great. to have her on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now for our second question in that in that area, where did you go for your first date? Um, so I flew to California, and you know, he picked me up from the airport. It was so funny, and then I think we went to the beach. I don't know if that was like a first date because this is my first time in California, never been. You know, so I wanted to see the beach. It was getting late at this point, and so we have a picture of the first night we met. I wouldn't really call that a date, but mm-hmm. when he asked me to be his girlfriend, he had Aww. this whole thing planned out and <laughs> and we, we went to the Orange County Fair mm-hmm. and he had this riddle and I won't say it because, you know, it's personal. And yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he had yeah, this absolutely. riddle of, I'm going to, you know, something special will happen here. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is we're on, we're on the top of the Ferris wheel and right when we get to the top, he asked me, right? And then like we had our first kiss type of thing. So I would say that was our first date you could say it was he, just really sweet and cute orange a, county fair he's a slick guy he had that all planned i gotta yes. say that's, that's slick so now lastly how did he propose what was the proposal story um so the proposal was a little different uh-huh. um it's almost like we we both knew kind of from the beginning like there's something more here there's something really special there's something god given here and so it was kind of like we would there was no surprise you know there was um we, we were talking about it, not from the beginning. We were, mm-hmm. we dated for a year and a half before mm-hmm. we got married, but you know, a few, let's say like seven or eight months in, you just, you really start to set in with this person and really think like, what is the future here? What is this? And so we were talking about it mm-hmm. and he actually flew to, from California to New Mexico to ask my dad in person if oh. he can marry me. Mm-hmm. So he, he went the whole nine yards. Like that's what people don't get from his mm-hmm. page. There's so much more to him than mm-hmm. what people give him credit for, you know, Mm -hmm. because he's a competitor also. So that all happened. And then, you know, we were, then we started planning and then all this and everything started happening before there was even a proposal. (laughs) Um, But the whole thing that doesn't make it any less special. Mm -hmm. I was, I wasn't frustrated, but I was not looking cute that day. I was just got off work. I was like, you know, tired. And he just kept pulling me out. He's like, let's go, let's go here. And he takes me down to this really special spot. And it was just on the water, overlooking the water. There's this little gazebo, like on the bottom of a hill um, in Washington state. We had just been there. Um, or that's where I was stationed. And he flew in before the wedding. So actually three days before we got married, he proposed to me because wow. he wanted, we wanted to have that memory, mm-hmm. right? It wasn't just about the planning. We wanted that. So he took me down there on the gazebo and I was embarrassed because like I said, I'm not a look at me girl. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want that attention. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And so he got down on one knee and there was a couple people around, but it was, it was on the lake and it was really sweet and it was very personal. And 
we just kind of stayed there for a little bit after, but yeah. That, that That's awesome. And again, you guys, I'll leave a link down below to his page. Everyone go and give yeah. him a follow. Absolutely. Yeah. But now we go to our audience favorite, my personal favorite part of the podcast, a little questionnaire where I'm going to ask Amanda here about a dozen or so questions that I ask all of our healthy and fit guests. I'm going to see how our answers stack up to everyone else that we've had on the show. So for our first question, what is your go-to workout song at the moment? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's on the spot. So I've actually kind of switched up my music mm-hmm. for spiritual reasons. Yeah. I'll just leave that like that. <laughs> um, but I've, I'm listening to Lecrae a mm. lot. I, have you ever, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's a rapper. It sounds so familiar. My yeah. yeah. My go-to genre for sure. I think like a lot of people is like rap, mm-hmm. you know, you got to get that little chip on your shoulder. You get that attitude and it just kind of helps you push the weight. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I would say rap is my genre, but Lecrae, actually, Canon. It's C A N O N. His newest Canon. album is like really, really dope right now. All right, yeah, that's the first time we've heard that, and I'll definitely go I and would give say that. that. A, I'll definitely go and give that a listen later because I always like yeah. to listen to all the ones that we get recommended. But now, out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could work out with any celebrity, who would it be? Celebrity doesn't have to be like. It can be fitness. It can fitness. be. It can be Hollywood. It can be athletic. It doesn't. Yeah, any celebrity. Gosh. Oh gosh, I would say. Hmm. I would say probably Lecrae. Yeah. Because I know I, I think he does like CrossFit stuff, uh-huh. but he's just been such a influence in my life for a lot of things, um, and I I respect him a lot. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of celebrities I don't respect. Oh, yeah. Ugh, I hate yeah. to say that, but oh, 100%. I respect him a lot. Yeah. And um, he's just all around a good a good guy. So. Be- believe me, I get that too. I mean, if there's a celebrities that yeah. I like actually enjoy, I mean, I could count them on all 20 of my appendages. So, yeah. Right. It's, yeah, it's, and that, he, he would challenge me. Yeah. So that's also why he would give me a challenge. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if you put it out, if you put a gun to my head, I would say probably like Arnold just because, you know, it's Arnold. But yeah, that's yeah. that's that's probably it for me too. But now what is one that's item cool. that you always need to have in your fridge? We've already talked about the chicken. Yep. Which is on sale. No, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say eggs. Yep. I buy the big carton of eggs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good source of protein. You know, you take the yolk out and it's like purely protein. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's our, For sure. I mean, chicken and eggs are by far our most popular answer. I mean, I was surprised yeah. though that one, a lot, an answer that I've gotten, I think six or seven times is for a lot of bodybuilders is mustard. Because, you know, that's it's, it's like zero in calories, it's zero in, you know, yeah. any and zero in fat. So they put it on their chicken. But I always say, like, if you're at a point in your life where you have to put mustard on your chicken, you might want to reevaluate things. But, you know, you know, I mustard. mustard. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I used to when until I was like three years old, then I outgrew it. And yeah, I turned into team ketchup. Yeah, I, I, I hate hate mustard but yeah so that was really just a shocking thing for me to to get so yeah that's another fun thing that we learned here on the show but now out of all the people that follow you on instagram what is one thing that they would be surprised to know about you if they met you in person um probably how tall i am how tall are you five nine Ooh, yeah that's that's, yeah that's up there yeah i'm I'm a tall competitor yeah so and my proportions i think probably make me look a little short Mm -hmm. um that's something for my husband also. A lot of people see him and us in person and it's kinda like Yeah. Because we're both tall. Mm-hmm. He's six four, six six three. Jesus. He's six four and yeah. then when he goes into prep, you like when you dehydrate, you actually <laughs> yeah. are a little shorter. Mm-hmm. So six four, six three, and then I'm five two and, and we're I'm just a big person. Yeah, I'm wide. I'm tall. I'm mm-hmm. just a big person. So, so yeah. If you see, if you go and follow her husband, he's probably like me plus twenty to twenty five pounds of muscle. So yeah, just do the estimation. So that's yeah. So that's basically what I look like. But yeah, I mean, yeah, being that tall is another thing that we get. Or, or, or actually, it's the opposite for a lot of our, especially our female guests, because you see some of these photos and they look a lot taller. And then I'm like, how tall are you? And yeah. They're like, yeah, I'm five two, five feet tall. And I was like, five, oh, two. okay, yeah. yeah. So like when you said five nine, I mean that's like there's only probably a handful of people that are taller than you that compete. I mean, we did have my second health and fitness guest was the tallest ever female bodybuilder competitor. She was six, three and oh. she, she did figure. So, I mean, she was in the, or no, she did bikini first and then figure. So she was in those heels and she was like, yeah, I was like six, eight and those things. And I was like, okay, yeah, good luck with that then. But yeah, she, she yeah. lived, she lived like five minutes away from me. I had no idea. I was like, Oh, what part of Minnesota are you from? And she's like, Oh, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Oh, that's five minutes away from you. And she was like, Oh, that's, that's a weird coincidence. But yeah, we did yeah, have, some, I mean, yeah, tall people 
yeah, it, it's a lot harder for bodybuilding. I mean, that must be difficult for him too, because a lot of the guys too are very, very short. So he's like one of the, yeah. probably one of the tallest, if not the tallest guy at all the competitions. So yeah, yeah just the, the struggles. The yeah. The struggles, I, I tell you. So now what is one thing that you would change about the sport of bodybuilding if you had the all knowing power to do so? Um, to change. I gotta be careful with what I say. <laughs> I know it's like Pandora. It's like Pandora's box. Yeah. Um, I would say there's been rumors about some shows being a little political. Mm -hmm. I'll say so. You sometimes, and I don't want to say it's every show. I I don't know mm -hmm. any judges personally, but I there's been some talk that. And I know, you know, people always want to point the finger and blame somebody for however they place, whatever. But um, I have seen a couple shows be a little political. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes it very hard, right? And a little frustrating because you're working your ass off. And not me personally. I think I did. I placed very good my first show. Um, don't think I necessarily deserved first place. But at nationals, got my ass whooped definitely deserve that i'm not saying the show is political but you know you do kind of see you you look at its stage photos and you're like why is that person in sixth and this person's in first or mm -hmm. second you know what i mean so it does make it kind of hard so I, but those are hard to find also absolutely you put the nail right in the coffin Leave I mean, the politics aside yeah. we're all hard working athletes well, absolutely yeah and that's what I always like to say too is that you know it's just like every other sport though where it's, it's up to human error because right. I mean humans you know we're imperfect beings I mean trust me being a baseball pitcher and having some umps make some questionable calls yeah I know all about that where sometimes you're just like okay yeah that's that's an interesting choice so yeah definitely that's what I I mean I said in ideal world but this is never possible I would just have it where the competitors you know get in a line and then they just have like their 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 body scanned by a machine and then it determines like who's the most proportionate and who has like the most muscular build. And then they chose, they choose the winner. But I know that that would never happen just because it just, yeah. you know, but there's that, just so much that goes into yeah, it, you know, 100%. so much. Well, yeah. And like, like I like to try to bring up, there's so many factors too, because like you said, if your tan's oh a little gosh. off, if your posing's a little off, if you're, if you're, if what you wear is a your little stage off, presence. your stage presence, yeah, I mean, your bikini so, fits right. Yeah, if it's so the right cut things. for your body, like I always say, you, you could be the, the most, makeup, the hair, 100%. If you could, I always say you could be the most muscular person on the planet. If you're a bad poser, you're not going to amount to anything. I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, you could have like 35 inch biceps and that wouldn't even matter when you're posing as long as you, as long as you don't hit it right. So yeah, I always love to say, you know, it's always quality over quantity when it comes to bodybuilding and to a lot of other things in life. But now, now's the, my, probably the most important question you'll ever get asked in your life. What was the last TV show that you binge watched? <laughs> um, it's been a couple years because mm -hmm. Like, I'm just so, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say my husband and I, we binge watched Gossip Girl <laughs> together. And we would just talk shit about it <laughs> all the time. And it was just funny. That, but I would say that and Grey's Anatomy. I like things that make me feel stuff. So yeah, and so, I don't like scary stuff. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the so. complete I'm the complete opposite. But yeah, I love watching shows and then talking crap about it with my younger brother. We used to do that all the time. We actually did that with Dawson's Fun. We did that with Dawson's Creek where we watched two seasons of that and then we were just talking crap about it the entire time, just about how bad it was. But it's I'm not gonna lie, I mean it was an all right show. But now what is your favorite TV show of all time? Oh favorite TV show. I actually really enjoy watching Naked and Afraid Yo, yep. because it kind of, it kind of, you can put a lot of different life situations in perspective mm -hmm. watching that show. Yep. It, and you learn a lot from other people. Just there's something about being naked and afraid, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, it's kind of terrifying because there's nothing to hide behind. Mm -hmm. That's one of those shows where I wish that they would just take all the cameramen away, just have all the cameras in the woods and actually just let it go down to see if they could actually survive. Because you know if those people are about to collapse or something, yeah. they give them water or whatnot, where I just say like, okay, here's, here's a little the sugar thing. cube. Yeah, or yeah, just like have it like, a, not like a Hunger Games thing where they're just on an island. They're like, okay, we're going to leave you here. We'll be back in a month. See if you guys are still alive, basically. Right. So, but yeah, that's definitely Ooh. one of those shows. Those that's, that's that's definitely one of those shows that I enjoy watching too every yeah. every once in a while when it's on. But now, what is the last, or what is your guilty pleasure movie that you enjoy? movie <laughs> i really like couples retreat 
That's a very have underrated Have you seen movie. it? Absolutely, I've seen it. Yeah, Kristen Bell, okay. Vince Vaughn, Jason Bateman. Yes. Yeah. So I love it because one, it's like, I, I love marriage mm -hmm. and it's like, it's part of my ministry and I work in a chapel for the military. And so we do a lot of marriage counseling, things like that. So there's that aspect to the movie, the beach, like yep. sunny skies, tropical waters, like heck yeah. And then like Ben Vaughn, he's just so hilarious yeah i was 14 it's so a good I, movie. I was 14 so Kristen bell was definitely my main motivation for watching <laughs> right. that movie but yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah that's it, it's a very underrated movie not too many people talk about it but yeah i do yeah. enjoy that movie it's it's so it's, it's a very good for me all my guy friends close your ears you never heard this from me princess bride is my guilty pleasure movie where i've never seen it princess bride what maybe i've seen it yeah, I was going to say, it's one of those movies where, it, there's one of those movies where at least once a day you hear a quote from it, just because there's so many quotes in it. There's so, like the quote, inconceivable, or like, uh, just there's so many other quotes that, I, like, my name is Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. Just, oh, okay. Every, there's so many quotes. So if you I haven't seen it, it, yeah, if you haven't seen it, then the whole thing, then I highly recommend it. I mean, I'm so dedicated to that movie. It came on when I was having my thesis paper in college, and I paused my thesis paper to watch it for two hours. <laughs> So that's dedication right there. So yeah, yeah. again, all of my guy friends, you can you can listen again. I'll never admit it in public, but you can if you listen to the podcast, you'll find out. But now we have two final questions on the questionnaire. What is your favorite fashion trend of all time and least favorite fashion trend of all time? Fashion trend. Oh gosh. Um as odd as it is, I think it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's colored hair, Ooh. bright colored hair, mm -hmm. because it's like, I really don't like it because I, I just, but then again, I have my hair, I dye my hair red. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can be a little, a little pinky, a little orangey. So it kind of looks like that. What's your natural um, color? Is it black? No, it's like brown. Oh yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. like just yeah. a really normal mm -hmm. brown. Um, but my hair lifts really well. Mm -hmm. So I, I dye it red. So sometimes it, it looks orange. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a ginger, like yeah. I have ginger hair. Um, but I would say that is, is the worst and the, or best and the worst because one, like you can express yourself as a mm -hmm. person. So I think it's really, really dope and really cool. But then at the same time, it's like, it's just so silly, like mm -hmm. off the wall. You can think, but I think I think it looks really cool when I see someone with some bright ass hair. Absolutely. Now, if we're talking about hair, I gotta say the mullet for me is one probably that I my favorite. I've never grown one myself, but whenever I see a guy with a still that's still rocking a, a solid mullet, I just gotta pay mad respect to him because that's one of those hairstyles where I mean. I so my my parents got married in ninety one and for their twenty fifth anniversary two years ago they showed us the wedding video and just the hair back then was just oh all the <laughs> most of the groomsmen like it was it was it, they they had class here where they didn't have like the super long mullets but you could tell that like they they part they had some they had a little yeah. bit of party in the back in there so yeah. just the hair alone I was just like God what a time to be alive but yeah. but yeah look at my husband's hair he yeah. had an intentional mullet for a good year and a half yeah. I think. We had a guy on our football team senior year who decided to grow out a mullet, and it was one of the greatest things ever. Like, just seeing him <laughs> run out of the tunnel, just that thick mane just coming out. Yeah. Right. Where, I mean, I wish that would make a comeback, but, you know, I am in Minnesota, so it's a huge hockey state. So for the state tournament, all the all the players had, grow out mullets and beards. So when they come out, but, yeah, that's our, that's my favorite part is watching all that. But, yeah, that's my definitely my one thing that I would do. But now for our last question, the questionnaire, if you could go back in time and talk to the 18-year-old version of yourself, what would be the best piece of advice you would give her? Oh, man. <laughs> I would say kind of my stomach kind of turned a little bit with this question. <laughs> I would say focus on God more mm -hmm. because you could have used him. Yep. And um not to be so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100 I mean I was I was 100 percent the same exact way so yeah that also applies to me in so many ways but uh you said I mean you've competed twice is there any date that you have in mind for your next competition are you currently uh thinking about that or do you have anything in schedule I know the exact show I'm gonna do I know exactly how much time I need but I'm keeping it a secret all right <laughs> We have a secret. So again, everyone. Yeah, I like Just that. Stay actually, tuned. I like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So everyone go and give her a follow. Maybe she'll let you know in a couple of months. Who knows? So again, you know, go and give her a follow. And lastly, I always before we wrap things up, is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, Other than like God. your husband and yeah, yeah and God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jay. Um, uh, God and my husband. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Because they're involved in fitness in my whole life. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, you guys, Amanda, we cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. Thank I mean, it was you. so great talking to you. Like I said, I love having my guests uh, guests on to come and share their stories. It's super inspirational. And everyone, go and give her a follow. Absolutely. I'll leave a link down below to her Instagram. I'll leave a link to her friend and to her husband's. Again, go and give them a follow. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.